Hey folks, and welcome to TK Power Sports. Today I'm out here riding this, the brand new Yamaha Wolverine X2 1000. And I know what you're thinking, well that's just the same old Wolverine I've already seen, and that's where you'd be wrong. So in this video we're going to go for a ride, get it muddy, and I'll tell you all about this brand new machine. Well, Pat, thanks so much for having me down here to North Carolina to ride this great new machine. And I think we have to go over all the changes and differences here. And, and the idea that we have to get out of people's heads that this isn't just a Wolverine 850 with a bigger engine stuffed into it. So why don't we go over the things that makes this a unique machine in the Yamaha lineup? Yeah, you'll notice from the bodywork, it is the same as an X2 850. Uh, the front hood, which we maximize for visibility, we love the visibility in the 850. And with the tight trails we have here, steep up and down, uh, tight between the trees, front visibility was really important. Looking mm -hmm. over the front of the vehicle, looking uh, up when you're going down a hill, looking at the next hill, the sun top is all the same as an uh, X2 850. Uh, the door skins and the rear cargo bed area, same as an 850. But when it comes to where the engine makes contact with the frame, then it's the same as an R-Max. Mm. Uh, everything's the same as an R-Max in that way. The drive line, the drivetrain, everything's like an R-Max in that perspective. And then what makes it very unique is the suspension. Uh, the A-arm design, the shocks themselves, the adjustability of the shocks. We've got a huge amount of travel for a 61-inch vehicle. Uh, makes a big difference when it comes to giving low speed comfort and of course high speed performance as well. So the suspension is very unique mm -hmm. to the Wolverine X2 1000. Yeah, and speaking on suspension, we talked earlier about the fact that you're using ZF now for the suspension components. Can you talk a little bit about that, sort of what made you, you know, go that route? Yeah, just a new vendor for Yamaha. We do use uh, Saks rear shocks on the mm -hmm. Wolverine X4, the uh, self-leveling suspension on the rear. Mm -hmm. But this is new for us for front and rear, and of course, piggyback reservoirs, nitrogen charge, gives you very consistent damping. Uh, you've got 30 millimeters of front preload to play with, 40 millimeters in the rear. Um, they've been a great company to work with. Again, helps us deliver what this customer is looking for when it comes to higher speed performance and low speed comfort. Nice. And now folks, here we are behind the wheel of this Wolverine X2 1000. We are at Brushy Mountain Motorsports Park here in North Carolina. And I think Yamaha chose Brushy Mountain because of how tight these trails are. You can see it here, there's trees everywhere, these sheer ridges filled with rocks, a lot of tight turns, a lot of roots. But yeah, just how tight the trails are really shows off the size of the machine. And it's certainly something that I notice right away. I've, I've recently been in an R-Max 4 and an R-Max 2, so I have a really good feel for those machines. And this machine straight up just feels smaller. You know, you have a shorter wheelbase, a tiny bit less width, so the overall size does feel a little bit better for tighter trails. Now, Yamaha says that, because I think one of the big questions with this model is kind of where does it fit into the lineup? Why did they think they needed it? Well, Yamaha says that the R-Max customer is the person who wants it all. Top speed, lots of power, all the features you can get. The Wolverine 850 customer is somebody who doesn't need all of that crazy power and all the features, but still wants a reliable, fun side-by-side, -side, also with a bit of a uh, quieter power plant. Now, this thing, the Wolverine X2 1000, Yamaha says this is for that mid-customer, somebody who wants the power of the R-Max, somebody who wants those features like the D-Mode, but they don't need to step up into the bigger machine because uh, they don't want to spend the money, quite frankly. So this splits the difference between R-Max and Wolverine 850. And uh, so far, it's feeling like a pretty good machine. So obviously, you know, you put the 1000 in here out of the R-Max, and I think one of the big benefits there is the fact that it has that drive-by-wire system. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and, again, sort of the benefits to that? 
Yeah, it is exactly the same as an RMAX from an engine perspective. We do have the 20 gram weight out of the RMAX 4. We're balance that, mm. balancing the uh, engine power feeling with a 28 inch tire, which is a little bit different than the 30 inch tire on the RMAX 2. So that's why we changed the weight spec from a four seater into this Wolverine X2 1000. But when it comes to the D-Mode system, which is a real big benefit with drive-by-wire, yeah. um, it's an accessory on this model. You still get sport, trail, and crawl, and they function the exact same way as in the R-Max. Uh, it is an accessory. It's about $100 MSRP, but it functions the same way. It's a nice backlit three-position rocker switch, and uh, it's something that you can really feel out on the trail everywhere you go, and you still get 100% of the engine power in all three modes, which is really important. Awesome. Um, so I think, you know, the story with this machine as well is going to be sort of identifying, you know, who this customer is because they're not the same as the 850 customer or the RMAX customer. So where do you see this kind of landing in the marketplace? Well, someone that values the three C's, almost all Yamaha customers are looking for their comfort, capability, and confidence. And we're delivering it in the X2 1000 with a couple of key things. Engine, they want that engine power. They want to be able to go at, at higher speeds, big hill climbs, western United States, higher elevations. That's really important. So engine size and engine power feeling are really important. Uh, tire size, the 28-inch tire on a 14-inch wheel gives that great balance of uh, sidewall durability, ground clearance, um, steering precision, and then the Bighorn Original provides a really good uh, variety of traction in a variety of terrains. Uh, or I should say really good traction in a variety of terrains. Mm -hmm. And then of course suspension travel, that's really important. Something people really look for, 13.3 uh, inches in the front, 15 and a half inches in the rear. Uh, again, with all that dual speed compression damping adjustability, really it lets you drive in a, in a variety of ways low speed, choppy stuff, rocks, tree roots, things like that. And again, those trail whoops that we get out west as well. Absolutely. Well, Pat, I think the puppies also love your machine. And I had a great day riding today. So thanks for having me out, man. That was good. Thanks, Steven. I'll start with all the positives that I've felt so far. First one, size, I mentioned. Second one, suspension. This Wolverine X2 1000 does have more travel than the 850. It uses uh, ZF or ZF shocks underneath and there's 13.3 inches of travel in the front and a little over 15 in the rear so anytime you add suspension travel that's always a good thing and uh, yeah this machine does feel a little bit less jumpy on the trail than the Wolverine 850 just because the suspension here is swallowing things up just a little bit better than that machine does and then on the flip side, the R-Max does have a little bit more suspension, and, and you can feel it. The R-Max, you can hit obstacles with a little bit more speed, you can drive a little bit more aggressively, and the suspension there takes care of you. So suspension-wise, yeah, again, it does split the difference between 850 and R-Max. Uh, ergonomically, I fit pretty well in here. I stand at 6'2", 300 pounds, so I mean, I'm not a small dude. Tons of headroom for the helmet, no problem there. I always like Yamaha steering wheels. They have these nice indents here for your thumbs, so you're really able to get that thumbs in driving position, which you're supposed to have, which is nice. Uh, adjustable steering wheel, quite a bit of adjustability, and then my seat adjusts as well, a few inches forward and back. So yeah, size-wise, I mean, if I fit, anybody will fit. My only complaint, and it's a, it's a perennial complaint with me and Yamaha side-by-sides, is the small, plastic bolsters that they put over here by my shoulder. I get why they do it. They want you to keep your hands and your shoulders inside the vehicle nice and tight. But uh, yeah, again, for me, a wider dude, it's, uh, it's a little bit annoying dealing with, uh, here, I'll point the camera down, at this guy right here. It's always kind of in my elbow. But outside of that, ergonomics are fine. And even that piece, not too annoying. Now here's another thing I noticed. I'm in low range now, coming down this steep hill. I got my hands, in, or not my hands, sorry, my hands are on the wheel. <laughs> my feet, though, are off the pedals. This is pure engine braking. I mean, look, zero, two miles per hour, three miles per hour, two miles per hour. The engine braking is incredibly aggressive in low range, which for coming down steep grades is, is nice. You want that slow speed control and you can get it and then I'm still in low range now, of course. The speed picks up real nice too. You get that real nice low end torque. And uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to complain about the power delivery out of this thousand. Smooth, predictable power. Lots of power. 
Um, yeah, the, the power plant is not an issue, and it uses a drive-by wire setup, which allows Yamaha to put in their D-mode switch. Now, the D-mode stands for drive modes. There's three different ones. You have trail, sport, and crawl. And essentially what it's doing is it's adjusting the throttle response. So it's adjusting the pedal's um, relationship with the actual power delivery. In sport mode, the pedal will be very touchy, very aggressive. In normal mode, it'll be a nice in-between. And then in, tr in crawl mode, the pedal really gets dialed out. So you have to really dig your foot into it. But the idea there is that you want to be able to modulate just little bits when you're rock crawling. So it allows you to do that. Another thing Yamaha added, you can see little knee pads. So you got one on your right and one on your left in the door. And again, that's exactly where my legs rest all day long. So uh, handy to have a little bit of extra leg comfort. And here we are coming down a real steep grade. Hello. <laughs> no problem at all. And again, I'm still in low range. The control, the engine braking that's there in low range is really impressive, so it's easy to control this thing coming down a steep hill. Talking about power steering and steering feel, I think Yamaha dials this in a little bit on the lighter side. Uh, same thing with the Armax. And yeah, coming out to a, a trail system like this, you can see rocks and roots constantly in the trail. And that stuff, you don't feel it in your hands. And that's the exact idea behind having a little bit of the overboosted power steering. Now, I will personally admit that I like a heavier steering wheel. I like more feedback. I like that weight in my hands. I think it gives me better control. I'm not saying this doesn't have some of that good control, but uh, I, I think my overall point here is I wish Yamaha would offer power steering that is variable. That's something that is out there in power sports. A bunch of other brands have it. How cool would it be if the D-mode switch also changed how aggressive your power steering was? For instance, in sport mode, this could get really heavy and dialed in, and then in comfort or in trail, it could get lighter again. So yeah, I do wish I had a choice. Overall, this is the better way to go, to overboost it, to keep people happy and not getting tired out there while they're riding. Um, but yeah, I wish we'd have a choice. Maybe that wouldn't come to this model, probably the R-Max, because that makes it more expensive. But uh, yeah, if Yamaha's listening, that would be a great option. And now comes the complaint section of the video, and. You guys might have heard it already, but here I'll show you. This thousand is loud. There's just no two ways about it. And when I was in the R-Max 4 recently, I had the same experience after a day of riding, feeling like, yeah, my ears are a little more bothered than they normally would be. And this is basically the same. I'm sure Yamaha put some effort into making it a little quieter, but compared to the 850, it is absolutely loud. And I always remember getting in that 850 the first time and thinking how quiet it was. So definitely a very different characteristic there. And if a nice, quiet, calm ride is what you're looking for, well, then you have a choice in that 850. If you're ready to live with the noise, the 1000 delivers the power and the performance you want. It's just a little noisy. So at the end of the day, I'd recommend a set of earplugs. <laughs> now, D-Mode also helps with this. If you put it in crawl mode, it just, I mean, it, it, it's still as loud as it was before, but in crawl, you just don't have a tendency to rev it up as high quite as often, and so that helps a little bit with the noise, but yeah, it's, it's a loud engine, that's just the way it is. Well, folks, we are coming to the end of this one, and as you can see, as evidenced by all this mud, we had a fun day riding out here in North Carolina. So what's the verdict here? I think the simple verdict is that having more choice is better. And now with this Wolverine X2 1000, we have a model that comes right down the middle between the 850 and the R-Max. So if you were looking for a Yamaha side-by-side, -side, you now have one more choice to consider, and it's a pretty good one. So yeah, that's it for this one. Now please go below into the comments. Let me know what you think about this Wolverine. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of TK Power Sports, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.